Good morning and welcome to the next diary date of my journey with the Red Sea Max S500 in white. I checked all the ammonia, nitrite and nitrate yesterday. Uh, ammonia is coming down slowly but surely. Dr Tim's video said to put one drop per gallon of ammonia into the system. Well I've got 135 gallons I think it is of American US gallons anyway, about 109 UK gallons. So the ammonia that I got, which is Dr. Tim's, said to put four drops per gallon. So I put four drops per gallon. So there's lots of ammonia in the system yet to come down. But it is coming down each day, definitely coming down. So the cycling is continuing. Yesterday, I, if you may see here now, I've got Ciparax in the system. Quite large diameter uh, tubes. Now the reason I'm putting Ciparax in, I don't probably need it just at the moment because I won't have that much nitrate and I won't have that much bioload in the system anyway to start with, but I did want to get it in there and get some bacteria into it. Particularly into the, the left hand part of the sump is where the refugium is and I'm going to put Chetamorpha in there and I also want to have copepods and amphipods etc in there so I want somewhere for them to hide apart from the Chato so ideally I'll just be able to pull out a daisy chain of the Ciparax and pop it into maybe or shake it into the main display to get the live food in there for the inhabitants the wrasses and maybe mandarins and uh, scooter blennies etc in the future but I do want to try and grow as many copepods amphipods as I can anyway so that was the reason for putting all of those in at the time skim is still trundling away it's not actually skimming anything because there isn't anything to skim but it's pretty well broken in now I think um, everything else there is fine the aquarium condenser trays turned up yesterday and I put those in or on making a minor cut to one of them because they are four feet long <laughs> excuse me let's bring this up they are four feet long as you can see so the back one I had to cut a little bit and that has made a massive difference to the temperature in here and as you can see probably I hope there is some condensation on there it wasn't a massive amount I actually expected more but one thing that I had been concerned with was this Aquamedic temperature control as you can see here that says it's 26.5 in the tank, which is great, and 25.7 outside, ambient temperature outside. But that Aquamedic has a one and a half degree error on it. So it could be a lot higher or it could be a lot lower, even a degree. I mean, if we need accuracy, something like that is just not accurate. And on my initial list of everything that I wanted to re-enter the hobby, for this system. I watched um, a review by, again, Reef Girl in this particular case, RWEFGRRL -E in Canada, and she's got several tanks and also in her basement, if you go and look at her channel, mixing stations and so on and so forth. And uh, she wanted an accurate reading of the temperatures and she, she used a HANA Check Temp 1 and she got very accurate results. Now the HANA Check Temp 1 in the UK, if you get it from HANA itself, is about £75. It's peanuts in the long term scheme of things. And it is accurate to 0 0.1 degrees C. So that's the type of accuracy that I thought I would go for. So I ordered one on Friday, it turned up yesterday morning, and this is the difference. So this is the box that it comes in. I'm not going to do an unboxing or anything like that. Reef Girl did that very, very well. You certainly don't need me to go through the same things all over again. This is it. Turn it on. It's calibrating itself. It's gone to zero, which means it's fine. It's now sensing the outside temperature, the air temperature here, which is 23.8. And yet, Aquamedic says, I can find it, 25.6 hell of a difference and then let's just put you down a second while I 
take the guards off on the top or slide them back so that I can put the temperature probe, which is this chappy, on the end of this. I'm going to pop it into the top here. Only needs to be put in. Where are we? I don't know if you can actually see that or whether I can find it. There it is, that tiny little line. No, you probably can't see it. But anyway, it's actually 27.7 degrees, 27.6. Whoops, I'm pulling it out. <laughs> Put it back in the water. There we go. 27.7 in there. And your Aquamedic, let's put that back, good. Aquamedic says it is 26.5. So I'm very, very glad that I did get this Aquamedic because I've now actually turned the heater down a fraction, or the one in the back here. And if necessary, I'll turn the one down in the sump as well to get the, the temperatures correct down to 26.5. Otherwise, everything is absolutely fantastic. It's now really just a matter of patience, waiting for the cycle to complete so that I can start putting some stock uh, in here. I've got my, my wish list of fish, and thanks to Jeff at Mad Hatter's Reef, again, another YouTuber I subscribe to, who has his top 10 fish for beginners. And I do still consider myself a beginner, even this is, though this is the third tank I've had. Uh, things have changed a lot since I had my other systems over the years and years back. And I want relatively easy to keep fish because I don't want to be chasing numbers all the time. I actually want to be able to enjoy this for the, the time that I have left on this spinning rock. And he also noted about putting fish in in a certain order. So the timid fish go in first, the aggressive fish, if any, go in last. So a tang and some wrasses are actually quite aggressive or can be aggressive so therefore they need to be put in last so they don't bully fish when they get put in afterwards. So I've got all that in mind. I've also discussed this with what is potentially my local fish store which is 23 miles away from me. There are two or three actually closer but um, I got all this system from a, a company called Advanced Aquarium Consultancy in Harlow in Essex and I met with Paul, who owns the business, Connor, his son, and Barry, the employee there. And I really like their operation, what they do, how they do things, how they semi-quarantine everything before they even get them into their shop, because they actually have two units in a business area. One is the shop, the other is purely for their warehousing, if you like, of growing their coral frags, because they, they tend to grow their coral frags to a reasonable size before displaying them and they also quarantine fish for some weeks before they go into the display cabinet so there's a very very good chance that they are healthy before purchase and I will be going back there to discuss cleanup crew and my fish list in the next few days I hope so that's it for today everything is doing nicely it's now just starting to exercise patience the name of the game at the moment and see whether we get any algae in the system and if I have to battle anything like that we will see. That's all part of this hobby. If you've watched this far, thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one.